Now I'm going to go over the, the uh, polarizing type systems. I've got two sets of polarizing lenses here. I've got some of the old linear polarizing lenses, some really cheapies. As you can see here, they're cheap as this bit of plastic and some plastic lens in them. Uh, these are the real D ones. You can see here, it says real D, right? A couple of real D glasses. So linear polarized, circular polarized. We'll start with linear. Okay, now, uh, I need a torch for this. Where do I put it? Here we go, torch. Now, I'm going to put uh, one of these over the camera. Okay, now, uh, Brian has uh, gracefully holding the uh, polarizing, linear polarizing lens, one of the lenses over the, the camera. So you're seeing me through a polarizing lens. So if you look at this lens straight away, if I put it, turn it on the, turn it, as I turn it, you'll see um, each lens go black, right? That's because they're linear and depending on which is, um, basically when they become um, at the same angle with each lens, that will block out all light. So as I twist them, one lens goes to the right angle and then the other lens goes to the right angle. So you can see through one and not through the other. So when you're in the theatre, you ha have to have your head exactly at the right angle, which should, you know, in the theatre they'll make it sure it's at the right, that angle, but because it's just been held up, it's not exactly the right angle. But, and that's how you get one eye seeing and one eye, one eye seeing one picture, and the other eye seeing the, seeing the second picture. And that's linear polarisation. Um, now, you put, actually just on this topic, these are actually quite commonly used for ND filters for cinema or for cameras. So you can do a variable, you've got two on a, on a camera, a video camera, in your daylight, you need to knock down the light a lot. You get to, they get two polarising lenses right next to each other and then you can twist them like this and then you can basically adjust exactly how much light you want to get into the lens. It's commonly where polarizer has been used on a day-to-day -day basis with uh, cinema with the cameras. Um, so that's, that's how that works. Now, we'll change this to a real D. Okay, Brian, can you just hold that up there? It's fine, just like that. Cool. Now, see? One eye is always black no matter what angle I put it on. You can see it through my shirt. So that's how um, the real D system works with polarizing filters. So you can move your head, doesn't matter. You'll still get uh, the same, um, uh, no cross talk, even though you move your head around, unlike linear polarization. And that's why it's you know, to a degree a lot su superior than linear polarization. Though circular polarization is known to have less efficiency in terms of um, you do get more cross talk uh, than linear polarization. Here we have a demonstration of why we need a silver screen for circular polarization or polarization in general and specifically for, if you can see here, the real D glasses. Again, I have a set of glasses held over the top of the screen as you can see because you can see through one and not through the other. And now I'm going to show you um, uh, this is basically silver, this keyboard, matte keyboard like a silver screen. And the white table here, matte white, so like a typical screen. Now, I'll just show the light shining on the surface here. You can see it on the white of the desk and on the silver of the keyboard. Now, if I pass the lens in front, you'll see that the, um, the silver on the keyboard is knocked back considerably but the white, the, 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 the sorry, the light on the keyboard is knocked back considerably. But the light on the table is getting through a lot more. That's because uh, it's not silver-based, and therefore the light has been dispersed more, and it is losing its polarization on the reflection of the light. This is why you need a silver screen, because otherwise you'll have huge crosstalk. So yes, um, you need a silver screen, and as uh, a lot of people say, a silver screen may not look or does not look as good as a matte white screen. 
Um, silver screens have come a long way. Um, of course, they are a high gain screen due to their character characteristics. But um, uh, in some ways, I don't really think they're as bad as they're made out to these days. Uh, there's a lot of old silver screens around, but the modern silver screens are quite a lot better. And I've I've heard from some cinema owners in other uh, or projectionists in other cinemas that they're quite happy with the new generation of silver silver screen used with their 3D or real D systems. Now, silver screens are probably the most contentious issue in regards to the real D or polarization based 3D systems. Um, due to the characteristics of a silver screen, um, they tend to um, have hot spots because they have a sort of a mirror type characteristic. Um, they're a high gain screen and so the light tends to bounce back more directly to the audience and therefore characteristics such as people viewing more from the side have a different viewing experience to those who are more in the sweet spots. It's not so good, especially on wide with wide auditoriums where people are looking at from wide angles. It's much better on a quite a long auditorium. So keep that in mind, um, but uh, I hear the new silver screens of today are much better. They do wear out faster. Um, if you're going to put a 3D system in, you basically have to buy a new screen anyway, even if it's going to be a matte white screen. You might need to buy something a little bit with higher gain, or if you're going to buy a real D system, you're going to get a, a silver screen, so it might be just a little bit more, but you still buy a screen. Um, so it's it's not, not as bad as some people think, I think, but um, I must admit, you, you really need to have a look uh, you must uh, view it for yourself and I highly recommend that you do. All the 3D systems do look uh, look very good. They all have their advantages and disadvantages and you need to view and have a look at it yourself before you make your decisions. Just quickly let's talk about um, screen gain and uh, as it's very important to 3D. Generally uh, in 3D uh, you've got light problems so uh, a lot of people are putting in higher gain screen. So, for example, to give you an idea of what that means, if you have a matte white screen and a 2K lamp uh, and you get a certain amount of light to the audience, if you have uh, that matte white screen is considered a gain of 1. So if you get a high gain screen with a gain of 2, basically you only need half the amount of light to get the same amount of light back to the audience because the screen uh, basically goes from gain of 1 to a gain of 2, it doubles the efficiency of the light, so you only need half as much light.